So you are the point man of RCN Lagos. By the grace of God. So I'd like to know what it was, how it was that you encountered, or how you encountered RCN and your spiritual father, Apostle Aramio Sai. I'll try to see how I can condense this and make it concise and precise. So, so I was going through storm in 2023 into 2024. Mm. And my younger brother gave me Apostle's message and he said, Hey, bro, you're going through a lot of challenges. I just stumbled on this man of God's messages. You will need to listen to his message. And I said, Look, just trash it, bro. Uh, I'm not willing to listen to anyone. Uh, because, I mean, I was in a church at this time, pastoring alongside, I mean, laboring with the pastor. But at that time, when I was completely down and out, nobody to speak to, nobody to turn to, I just picked up the, the, the message, all right, and I decided to play. And the title of that message is um, Staying Power. It was a prayer utterance. And I, the moment I heard that utterance, I said, who is this guy? I remember saying, who is this guy? Not who is this man of God, all right? Who is this guy? I went on to listen to that tape for over hundred times wow all right and then i said to my younger brother man this man blessed me so much give me more of his messages so the thing you need to know about apostle Aramis messages they are very intoxicating uh, messages you can't just cut yourself away from can you can you testify to that my viewers can you can you feel what i'm saying all right so um it continued and i asked my younger brother to give me apostle's phone number and so that relationship started i remember my wife was pregnant and she said to Apostle, Apostle came over to the house and she said, Sir, I have a request. Can you just be doing Bible study with us in the house? And Apostle just obliged and said, I'll do Bible study with you guys. And we're there for eight months. Wow. Yes. So um, you remember I said that my wife requested for him to just do Bible, Bible study with studies, us. Yes. And that was because we're starving of the word. I hmm. mean, we already stopped going to church at some point. Now, wow. I'm not going to advise you to stop going to church right yeah. it's not good to stop going to church mm -hmm. he said do not forsake the garden of the brethren as the manner of some of you is so mm -hmm. we 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 kind of just started a bible study at home so after mm -hmm. Solomon came in and he said okay he will do that with us we're just mm -hmm. four pastor victor turayo pastor austin and grace All right grace is my wife mm -hmm. so we started and it was eight months after eight months i remember that the first harvest that came to my living room rcn started in my living room wow. rcn lagos started in my living room wow. and rcn lagos happened to be the first branch can you imagine hmm. that was the first Interesting. branch. yeah after mccordy what you have is <laughs> lagos oh yeah huh? after uh -huh. mccordy what you have is lagos so apostle was with us because you know of course again he was working with the oil industry yeah so um we had fun mm. we had bible study Papa would treat us to the word of God. My wife would treat us to solid meal. Mm -hmm. You know, we had solid meals. And um, one day, he just came and he said, um, no, not one day. I had a dream. The way it all metamorphosed into RCN was the fact that as we were doing that Bible study, we had had one conference with Apostle, um, God's building. Mm. So I had a plan to start my own ministry, the Global Intercessors Network. Okay. We were already, I mean, I was already into ministry, ministry for over 14 yes. years at this time. Oh, wow. So I wasn't a novice mm. right but there was there were other plans for me to leave the country at this time so we're going to start and then one day i had a dream and i saw apostle arame in that dream he was looking old and then he raised his head and he spoke to me with the voice of a young man mm. and then the lord said to me that uh, this man in his old age will still be very relevant to the youth wow. i said all right then he transformed back into the apostle arame of that year yeah and then spoke to me with the voice of an old man. And then the Lord said to me, he's an old ancient. Hmm. That he's not my mate. Because at this time, I really wasn't seeing him as my spiritual father. To be honest, that's what it more is. More like a friend. It was, exactly. You know, he was more like somebody, I, like a go-to person that I can hmm. say. And I think it's interesting for me to say this to younger people who feel that relationships cannot metamorphose. Hmm. All right. I mean, I could, that period, if I say arrow, I won't feel bad. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't seeing him as my spiritual father. Okay, I just saw him as somebody that will relate as fr as Friends. friend and brother in Christ. Yeah. Somebody that is a go-to person that mm. I can just say, hey bro, um, pray with me. I'm trusting God to do this. But I had that dream. Mm. Now, the beauty of that dream was the fact that, you know, when he transformed into a younger person and he spoke to me with the voice of an old man, then the Lord said, this man is not your mate. You see, that was when the separation began. Yeah. So it was easy. Now, okay. how did I know that he was my spiritual father? You asked that question. Mm -hmm. It was this dream. But this dream was an addendum to a dream that my wife had like two years prior wow she had a dream and the lord said to her that her husband will fulfill his ministry at the time an old man walks into his life 
Oh, wow. You get, you get it now? Yes. So an old man will walk into my life and then that old man will arrange, rearrange everything. Now, prior to this time, I wasn't willing to do ministry because I was making money. Mm. Right? So I, I just send money to people who want to travel and God said, go back into ministry. I said, look, I'm making money. <laughs> I, I, I stayed in the north. So when I came to Lagos, after one year, God turned me into a millionaire in six months. So oh. God was blessing my business. So, I mean, sort of, mammon conquered me. Yeah? Mammon conquered me. So, so God blew on, on the business. That was when my wife had that dream. So I just woke her up that night and I said, I think the old man is around. Hmm. And she said, who is the old man? I said, Apostle Arame. She said, what? What did you just say? I said, Apostle Arame is the old man. You were the one that had the dream hmm. of an old man. So I narrated my own dream to her. And that was how I went to tell Apostle that, look, we are no longer friends. Hmm. <laughs> we are no longer brothers. You broke up. You are my father. <laughs> um, you are Papa. Hmm. I'm your boy. Hmm. And I remember he was in, in my car. I was taking him back to Shuleri. And he exclaimed, No! I said, Why are you shouting, sir? What's the problem? He said, Because God told me that this thing will, will metamorphose into RCM ministry. I said, oh. That's what it is. I'm submitting everything I'm doing, stopping everything I'm doing, and I'm following you. So that was how RCN started. Hmm. We were doing RCN in the living room and we we're doing mighty meetings. Convergence started immediately. Our first convergence meeting was about 120 people. Oh. The next was 240. That was how it started growing and just okay. growing. But the beautiful thing was while we we're having those programs, we we're having little Bible study at home. Nobody knew, no membership. The first time we we're going to have members, 11 people walked into that level, living room. Wow. And the rest, as they say, is history. history. If not for God, some of us will not be able to speak and talk about Jesus. So I love it when I see people who have terrible past, people who were drug addicts. I never took drugs, but I sold drugs. Wow. And I saw the damages. I, I know the impact of that in the life of younger people. Wow. Right? Um, um, so I am passionate about younger people. I'm passionate about people who are into drugs, people who are into terrible past. There is a way people with terrible past activate me. All right? And then, of course, I am passionate about family. Yeah. I, I love family. Um, I'm into family. I love, I love the word family life in all sense of it because again i didn't grow up in an atmosphere of love mm. so uh, i had to learn to love jesus had to teach me how to love so i'm passionate about family i'm passionate about teenagers i'm passionate about people with terrible past and i'm praying to god that that passion will never abate wow. yeah awesome wow that's deep so you are now into full-time ministry if i'm correct um yes full-time ministry at yeah. some point and then at some point i'm um, heading back hitting the streets <laughs> Um, yeah, um, I'm hitting the street back because I gave my I gave up my company in 2020, and that was oh, wow. because the Lord said it was time for me to go into full time. Mm. But guess what? 2024, I started teaching my people in RC and Lagos that it's time for us to go back to work. Um, there's no need for us to be idle, and that's not to cast aspersions at people who are into full time, because God said to Paul. I mean, Paul said to his people, he said, "You know that these hands have provided for my necessities. I'm not being a burden to anyone." And then I kind of felt the release to hop back into business. And so hmm. I'm gradually going back into business, awesome. setting up the structures for my business. But yes, full time, I give RCN full attention. So yes. that my own full time definition is to give my calling full attention okay. in every phase of it and in every sense of it. Whatever God wants me to do, if it's two o'clock in the morning, I'll give time to it. Yeah. If it's four o'clock, I'll give time to it. So I'll just say to you and to everyone that I use my spare time to make some money. Hmm okay that's good yeah. so if you don't mind me asking what kind of business are you trying to venture into this year? Woo! um guys <laughs> you will know the business <laughs> but it's not too far from what i love okay. uh, i love building oh i love to smell cement no wonder i love to smell cement i love to pack sand so um it's going to do with um, real estate um 30 years of my life was in sokoto state and those were memories, those were days that were very, very memorable to me because mm. that was when I encountered the Lord. I encountered the Lord in Sokoto State at mm. the age of 19 wow. after I had lived a gangster kind of a life. Um, yes, and I mean, that's not to be proud of because I remember one of our pastors that was speaking here said how he wished he enjoyed that kind of life before he mm. came to the Lord. And why he said it, I said, see life, how I wished mm. I was like him. You know, so the balancing of that story is God will need men who are innocent to become righteous and he will need men who are gangsters mm. to become righteous. Mm. All in all, the innocent and the bad boys, they all need the righteousness of God because okay. innocence cannot take you to heaven. Mm -hmm. Ruggedness, being a drug dealer, 
being to the prison, being a bad boy, cannot take you to heaven. You have yeah. to give your life to Christ. So yes, that's just a snapshot of my life and my mm -hmm. journey um, in Sokoto State. Wow, awesome. So tell us, uh, how did you connect with RCN to the point of being the point man RCN? Uh, as I listened to Apostle 2014, okay. 2013, 2014, then I I don't want to say I stumbled upon him, but somehow I stumbled upon him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 2013, 2014, I started talking to him on Facebook. Okay. And Papa would take some time before he replies my messages, but we started talking. And then it resonated in my spirit that this is the man God has called me to follow. Oh, wow. So in 2016 or 2015, 2015, yes, 2015, I took the long journey yes. from Wari to Makodi by road. And if you know the roads in 2015, <laughs> Lord have mercy, it was terrible. I had three accidents going back. Wow. Yes, I just bought the car at the time. It was a CNN. Okay. Three, we had three accidents going back. Mm. So we drove down. Mm -hmm. If you see that video, because mm. it was a contact. Okay. If you see that video, Papa introduces me. And then he says something like, worry is going to become very close to Makodi after today. Mm -hmm. So that was a destiny statement. Yes. Right? Yes. So yes. I knew that he was not just speaking about geographical distance. Okay. He was speaking about spiritual connections. Connections, wow. At that time, I was a senior pastor in a denomination. Okay. Yes. Leading five churches, oh. five branches of the church. Oh. But I knew. You had become a minister. Of yes, yes, yes. Oh. I was a pastor. That is, yes. that is but great. I knew, I knew that my destiny was with this man. Okay. So that's how we connected. Okay. Um, with how God arrested you. That is a story that I would want you to share with everyone. Well, um, I tell my story in almost all my teachings. Yeah. Uh, I think my, my salvation story is more popular than my name itself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I was exposed to a lot of vices as a young man, um, from pornography to sexual immorality. Got into the university. I joined the confraternity. Uh, I was not just a floor member in the confraternity. I rose to be the number six man in that confraternity. Oh could have been number one, but for some reasons, I, someone counseled I shouldn't be number one. So I became number six. Um, but I was growing up under, or in a family where my mom was a very good Christian. Wow. Yeah. I saw my mother really walk with God, learn the ways of God. My dad was never around, so my mom was a single parent, okay. raising four kids by herself, four children. So. Wow. But I saw her find God, I saw her love God, I okay. saw her commit to God. Yes. I saw her give her life to begin to do the things of God. Yeah. Right. So that seed was always somewhere in my heart. All right. For instance, there was a time we had a clash with another confraternity. And because of the position I was in confraternity at that time, we were supposed to be the ones to go to war. Wow. So um, all of us that were going to go to war, we were supposed to go and do the traditional protection herbal medicine and all of that so that yeah. you don't get killed in yeah. battle. Yeah. yeah. So but at the back of my mind I remembered my mother's teachings, you know, that you, you do business with the devil, you will pay for it. So yeah. I I didn't I found a way to escape so that I won't um, get involved. So yeah. that foundation seemed to always provide a base for God to um, reach me. So I actually got born again in nineteen ninety six. Wow. But I backslid. Okay. Yeah, but my my encounter with God was was dramatic in the sense that um, I don't I don't remember somebody particularly sitting me down to say you need to give your life to Christ. Christ. But watching my mother, seeing the way she lived, I on my own wow. on a particular day just realized that only Jesus could help me. Oh my! Yeah. So he lit fires in my heart. Okay. And like one of my mentors taught me, right that. Um, in the Christian faith, a child can be born in isolation. Yes. So salvation can happen to anybody anywhere. anywhere. Can get born again under a mango tree. Yeah. Can get born again in a car. Yes. Right. So I got born again in isolation. Okay. Obviously, the things I've been hearing in church, the things I've been experiencing, um, led me to Jesus. Jesus. Christ. So yes. even though I backslid, um, 1999, 2000, I was back where I shouldn't have been. Yeah. But 2003, all of a sudden. God came for me again. Okay. There was a fresh hunger in my heart. And then I began to press in to find God. That is awesome. Yeah. This happened in 2003. 2003. So were there specific encounters or just... 
Yeah, at this time I was listening to two particular preachers that I would not like to mention on camera because okay. their life today is not what it used to be. Oh my God. Yes, um, but mm. two particular preachers. They raised a, an intense hunger in my heart, heart. for God. Oh wow. Right. And then I was in a campus fellowship at the time. Yes. Where as young people, people were madly in love with God. Okay. Kai, it was, it was intense. Okay. So if you did not love God, it's like you were missing out, missing or something. out on something. So those of us that were living double lives were like the people that were that were suffering. <laughs> if you were serving God, you, like you, you were like, oh, this is the thing to yeah. do. It's not like today where it's the other way around. Yeah. That people who are serving God are envying the people who are serving uh, Satan. Satan. Yeah, so mm -hmm. All of us now started <clears throat> looking for opportunities to uh, find God. God. So as I listened to those preachers, I began to have dreams. Okay. Began to have revelations. Okay. I fell in love with prayer. Wow. Yes. So I started praying. Okay. I remember that um, because I graduated 2004, yes. February 2004. In that year, 2003, yes. I was writing my project. Okay. And everybody went home. Okay. But I told my parents, my mom I wanted to stay back in school. Okay. So I stayed. Right. I prayed like I had never prayed before. Okay. So being one that has very strict prayer schedules yep. and all of that. How do you get to marry your prayer, prayer expectations upon your life with other aspects of your life, like ministry, family, relationship with friends, and all of this? Yeah, if I begin with family, I think my greatest gift in ministry is my wife. Wow. Yes, yes. She, she understands God's expectations of my life. So okay. if I lie down that I want to pray and I'm going to pray six, seven hours, my wife knows that I should not be disturbed. She takes care of the children and stuff like that. So um, I believe that if you as a mortal, if you understand your priorities and what is most important to you, you will create time for it. Okay. So, create time for prayer, then yeah. build everything else around, around that. It. Wow. So, prayer then becomes the fulcrum, the core yes, of your existence, and everything yes, else flows out of your prayer life. So, that's the way I live. Okay. Wow. Oh, that's awesome, sir. So, are there like important lessons that you would want to share with people? Important lessons that of prayer in your life that you would want to share with people? I'm making emphasis on prayer because I know, I know the kind of person, I, I, I have followed you closely, like I said. And I know that you, are, you make so much emphasis on prayer, purity, consecration. So are there important lessons on these three that you would want to share? To well, us? number one is recognize that your Christian life is a journey. Okay. No spiritual man was formed overnight. Okay. Don't go into prayer expecting that you'll be a giant overnight. Okay. Knowing God takes time. Yes. It takes a lot of time. Right. If you're not willing to do the time, you will never find God. Okay. You'll be willing to commit time to it, time to it. Know also that without consecration, there's not much God can do with your okay. life. Every mortal on the face of the earth is consecrated to a spirit. Okay. So there's nobody that's neutral. Okay. Consecration helps define which side of the army and which side of the war you will be on. Right. So if you consecrate yourself to God, you're on God's side. If you consecrate yourself to Netflix, to all kinds of lewd comedy, sexually charged, videos. Yes, we know the side you are on, so you must be consecrated. If you refuse to be pure, at the end of the age, the Bible says you will separate the sheep from the goats. And if you've listened to our Father teach, the doctrine of separation is a core doctrine in Scripture. Okay. And one of the tokens of separation is purity. Alright. Purity. Uh, before I met um, Apostle, the man that I was drinking from, is dead, been dead long ago. Yes. Z.W. Tozer. Okay. Tozer's books were manuals to the spirit realm for me. Okay. My God. There's one that I can read 50 times and I won't be tired. The Root of the Righteous. Okay. It's a powerful book. Okay. Right? So it shaped my theology. Okay. Shaped because I had never met a man that loved God yes. the way Toza loves God. Okay. So it, it made me define my life by those measures. Okay. So I knew that I needed to pursue God. And then you cannot be pursuing a reality and be afraid of telling the truth about that experience. Mm. So I would rather be unloved, I would rather be unknown, I would rather, rather be uncelebrated, yes. and tell the truth like Jeremiah, yes. than pander to what is popular and what is acceptable as Christianity in modern day. That's what informed my, first, my, my second book, okay. Organized Religion. It okay. was the pain I was feeling. Okay. Meet Christians who, who are satisfied with half measures, yes. You know, a Christian that can speak in tongues but can still fornicate. You know, mm -hmm. Christian that can speak in tongues but does not like prayer. You know, yeah. coming so, to that, yes. were there times when you were like this, like before this genuineness yes. uh, in your ministry and in your life? Were there times when you went that genuine? 
Sure. Okay. I had to make that transition. Oh, wow. Yes, I had to. You know, and um, that's the challenge with the modern day church. You can be around God. Yes. Be around religious activity. Be around systemized, organized Christianity. Mm. And yet you are shallow. Wow. And yet you are two-faced. Yeah. So I was there. I've okay. done that. All right. I have the t-shirt. <laughs> okay. uh, but I got frustrated. Wow. Yes, because you will find that when your convictions are now put under pressure, yeah. it will now be obvious that you don't know the God whom you speak about. Okay. Yeah, so yes. I got tired of coming to tell God every week, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, have mercy. I, have mercy. <laughs> and then you read the Bible yeah. and you find that people lived this life. Yeah. And they were not oscillating between doing right and doing wrong. Mm -hmm. They lived this life yeah. and they died for what they believed in. Yes. So why, why, what's my excuse? Like, um, I don't know who was saying it yesterday and I can't remember. Jesus is the pattern. And if Jesus lived in his humanity, yeah. it's something I've been teaching for years now. Yes. Jesus yeah. is our perfect example in his humanity. Yeah. So I don't have an excuse. So I put pressure on myself to make the transition. In youth service, I used to beg God every night, I will never be fake. I don't want to be fake. So if I come to Abigail's meeting and Abigail is teaching and I'm convicted, you will see me on the floor crying. Help me, Jesus. It's one of my favorite prayer points. Help me, Jesus. So I, I, I found a portal in the spirit. I think I've been in meetings that I've seen you that way. Before. Yeah, I found a portal in the spirit that just allowed me to break free from the shackles of that false Christianity. So if I don't have a prayer life, I will cry. If I don't love the word of God, I will cry. Okay. So um, I was there. Okay. And I know the frustration associated with that, that season of a Christian's life. All right. Because you are seeing... We would refer to you as a cover in the background, as the international prayer director of the RCN ministry. What's it like to be on the, like be in the background to hold this kind of position? Mm -hmm. First of all, it's very challenging because uh, uh, people don't like prayer. That's <laughs> number one. And it's not their fault. Myself, I don't like it. Mm. Uh, the and flesh, okay. flesh doesn't like prayer because prayer is not a natural thing. It's something spiritual. That's the reason why the Spirit has to help you, help your infirmity to be able to pray. So you start in the flesh before the Spirit will come. Mm. And when it comes, and he meets you. Yeah. So it's like prayer for the spirit and then spirit for prayer. They began mechanically. Mm -hmm. That's what apostles. The Holy Ghost came. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost came, you now have the infirmities. Mm -hmm. It's like you switch from manual to auto. You understand me now? Uh, so that was what happened. And so when, okay, basically when we met apostles, before apostles came, you know, he himself is a man of prayer. Yes, sir. People say some things, they say we are the ones that are behind the background and all that. And all that. Nobody prays in this ministry like apostle. Yeah. Apostle. In fact, the reason why prayer first prayer is going on powerfully in this ministry because he himself is a man of prayer. He likes it. If not, it would have shut down. There are other ministries that there are people who are prayerful there because the hair doesn't like it. Those guys are. They kill it. So the reason why the thing is ongoing is because the head and it's what is flowing from the head that flows down. So I contacted this grace while I was in the village, but faith movement killed it with keys. So when we met Apostle, before he came to Makodi here, or when he was in Makodi here, he alone prayed for one hour. Sorry, for one year. Mm. And after, it was that prayer he prayed that he lit the fire that drew us close to his house. There were three men, Joshua, Otega, and uh, Pastor Shala. And prayers were going on the background before Remnant was now launched in 2007. Yeah. Here. So we continued prayers. And when I heard Apostle teach, I've heard the teachers, I've heard, I've heard the best of preachers. of preachers, teachers. When I heard, I said, who is this man? I went home that day, I cried all through. I couldn't say, I was just rolling on the rock, rolled to the other side, rolled to the, rolled to the side, rolled to the other side. And now my passion was that, Lord, keep this man. Let nothing happen to this man. This is how people will rise and then people not happening. Immorality, whoosh, mm. or something will just cut them off or they become polluted. Or once I was just saying, this is a great voice. And that was what informed my passion for prayer. First of all, I was for him. And Joshua, we spent some time for seven hours. We were just praying for him. It got so bad that sometimes I would I pray for him. I would see his post. I would just carry it and kiss it. Because the love was. And that was how we, that was what we shared. Mm -hmm. Very strong. 
very strong. What they say, the love for David, David said his love for, the love between David and Jonathan was more than that of a woman. Yeah. That was what we enjoyed. Wow. So, having seen this kind of person, and was talking about revival, and the Lord has spoken to me about revival also in Binwe. And that was 2001, January, maybe February, was in Abuja, and he said, I will use you in the forthcoming revival in Tigland. Mm. And before I came to Binwe State University, and then I brought the Binwe State University, and I now met him. I also pioneered, okay, he was one of the people that pioneered the prayer movement that we came to join, be part of. So that's why I started hearing about him. And now, he was transferred to Makodi here upon graduation and then met him. That was how we continued. So I decided that this kind of person, since we were to trigger revival, I was thinking that that thing that happened in Azuta Street will happen. We will not know the people. Oh. Uh, let's be at the background. Let his voice be heard because okay. what he carry is what the worship should hear. Yes, so I was sir. comfortable staying at the back. Well, I was born in a family of... Uh, you might even know the number now. I think <laughs> I have to count because my father has about five wives, six wives. Uh, about five gave birth. Um, the last born from my mother's gift. Oh, wow. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I was raised in the Catholic background. Hmm. And uh, somehow I had this uh, natural tendency to just, to just be stubborn. <laughs> if I want to cry, I cry from morning to evening. They have to come and beg me. If I want to fight my elders, I don't fear anybody. I was just, there was just natural inclination to be bad. Last born syndrome. I can just wake up and look at Nothing good comes into my heart. Hmm. So this time I burnt our house, burnt, yeah, burnt the house. Son, you just told me, just light the house, just burnt the place. I don't know why I did that. Nobody provoked me. I was not angry. Nothing. I didn't say that on the pulpit because, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, all this time I'm still sitting in the pulpit. <laughs> Something just told me, just, just set fire on the house, just set fire on the place. God so I was naturally very stubborn. To a point where my dad said, I'm not going, I'm going to stop going to school because I was going to school. This reason why all this was happening and all that. It's not as if I was among bad people mm. that were influencing me neg negatively. But this was just like that. And uh, wow. well, my mom was a very devoted Christian. I want to believe that maybe it's her prayers that got me saved mm. at some point because uh, uh, she will always have me come to church. And I, I, be I belong to a, a band, the music, local music band. I was very small, but I played gong <laughs> in church. The link came quick. The link can quit, the link can quit, the link can quit, and like that. So we had this, uh, my brother, my uncle that was disabled, mm. he assembled us and be telling things, all stories about uh, Christianity and all of that, but they knew that I was stubborn, mm. even though I was raised from that kind of background, but those things didn't make an impact in my life. Maybe it did not make impact, or maybe it was internally installed, but I didn't know. And then later on, it was what was poured me to become born again. Oh. Uh, I was a footballer. Uh, very skilled footballer. Anywhere where that was what announces me. This kind of football, you know the way they sing, oh, culture, mm. you pass Marado, uh, oh. that's what they used to sing by name. In the village, they compose songs and it, as well those songs were in English, I would have sung them yeah, mm. in my dialect. So they sing anywhere I go. This kind of thing that after match, ladies will come and carry me and be shooting, throw mm. me up. Wow. I was a celebrity <laughs> right from childhood. So very influential. So I left Abuja and I was in the village and I was in Abuja. And Abuja, Finished primary school, repeated primary six, and then entered secondary school. And that is government secondary school, Gariki, mm. area 10. Yes, area 10. And the first thing the announcement was football. The very day I entered into the field, I became known in the school. They had a name, there's a name they used to call me. Maybe some of my friends might be watching this now. They mm. call me Terry Pass. Terry Pass. Wow. <laughs> I, I refuse to say this. This is the first time I said this in the public. Uh, so, uh, that was that. So I started becoming. I don't know, but I found myself amongst people that were not uh, my kind of person. Let me say so. The, the only thing I, I don't do is that I don't smoke. Okay. I don't smoke Ibo. I don't smoke cigarette because I don't see any while you smoke. Mm. The reason is because there's nothing I want to do that I cannot do. They, they have to charge before they can slap somebody. Else. But me, I don't. That was, it was natural. I don't need that. I was bold and things like that. So uh, I, I don't humanize. I, I, that's one thing that God used to keep me till I go. Maybe if I knew that it would have been difficult for me to get born mm. again. I had this, I fear women. I just be afraid. Some I like them, but <laughs> I, be afraid. I don't know what to tell, what to, yeah. how to approach them and things like that. I fear them, so I stayed away. And um, somehow in FCS, you know, at that time, Deeper Life was the the premier, let me say the premier ministry yeah. in Nigeria, was, yeah. was, was influencing yeah. every other ministry. That was the, during the holiness movement. I think we have not had that kind of movement since that time. Genuine movement, people will be born again genuinely. And you see, Kora will be saved genuinely. Wow. And so, some of the people members were on camp, when I was in our school. 
So they keep ministering and like that. So they invited me to FCS, and they have no mean to be. I fight any. You don't. You don't. You don't. <laughs> so shortly before I joined FCS, I think when I was in Genesis one, there was this senior that used to who just come, gather us and be preaching to us. I used to be interested, but I know I was a bad boy. So why should I even make an attempt to? I don't belong to them. I already condemned all of that. And uh, but those things remain inside of me. I would go pondering over them, and I had this uh, weakness, very strong weakness. When I get angry. I just cut everyone. And I was a very strong person. Very strong. I don't fight my mate because I will kill you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So, um, one of the. And when I do that, I'll go home and cry. Sometimes I've broken somebody's head before blood is coming out. I'll go. Oh, no. I sit down and weep. I say, why am I doing this? I'm feeling emotional right now. I say, why am I doing this? I will cry, 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 cry. And then before I know what's happening, there was a time I even stole my elder sister. And scatter her head, and I went home like that. And then this guy installed those things out of me. And then with the one that actually got me, started dragging me into the Christian fold was a deeper, sorry, not deeper life, assemblies of God. <laughs> that doesn't make Oh, how do they call them now? They are, disappear they are disappearing on the scene now. Jehovah Witness. Witness. Oh. You know, they used to have pamphlets yes. and all of that. So they gave me one of the magazines. I said, I don't have money. They said, okay, they will give me anytime I have money, they will come. And then they'll pay. Now in the budget that time, when once we we're on break from school, this mini job planting flowers yeah. was just come on, just do that and have money so that you, you come to school and you're just spending. So I was doing one of the works and then they, they saw me and then advertised the book to me and preached and I collected the book. So when I came back, I read through, I just I was just reading through. This was in Genesis 2. This was in Genesis 2. And then they said, the Bible said, call nobody father. They were just criticizing Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And the criticism was so strong. And I have never opened Bible in my life. I said, what? I said, what? I said, okay, I will not go and open Bible. I'll say that it's true. Now when I, and I turned and faced down, I was lying on my bed. I said, does it mean that this joke of people will go to hell? Mm -hmm. No, God cannot do that. No, how can he do that? But I, I became concerned. So that brought me to start reading scriptures. But I didn't have the ability to obey what was there until... Somebody invited me to FCS. When I went to FCS, the preaching touched my heart. I can't even remember who preached, but it touched my heart. So every Wednesday, I would go to FCS, even wow. though I had not changed. But I, I didn't stop coming. Mm. When I come and there's a word, I'll go home and repent and cry and cry and cry and all of that. But I'll still find myself doing the same thing <laughs> until the, my elder brother was not born again. Was going to, um, sorry, my in law was going to deeper life that time, but he was not born again. Even with the movement, it didn't affect his life. So he would bring Kumuyu's books, The White Throne Judgment, um, With God, All Things Are Possible. In fact, when I read The White Throne Judgment, that was when my heart began to beat, beat, mm -hmm. and all of that. So that time I made up my mind. I went on holiday. So um, we went, as usual, for the mini jobs, and then I met a friend. I met one friend like that. His name is Elder Umo. He's oh. in the apostolic church right now, area one Abuja. Wow. Mm, area one is, is an elder there. So he started telling me about the Lord. He was our leader. He started telling me about the Lord. We'll go to Asokoro that time, go to State House, which is White House, sorry, which is a um, presidential okay. villa now, villa now. Go to interna international uh, conference, mm -hmm. or was not far from my school, uh, for IBB. Where there's IBB Golf Course now. Almost everywhere in Abuja, there's no place we could not enter. Wow. And all of that. So. He uh, began to tell me about Christ. Mm. And that was how he led me to Apostolic Church. Oh. And that was how I got born again genuinely. And before oh, that time, okay. when I sleep, I would see women coming to entice me and to sleep with them. And the dream continued. I didn't know how to handle it. So I came to him and told that this is what has been going on. They said they felt that I'm not properly born again. So he took me to another elder mm. who now preached to me and then led me to Christ and then prayed for me. That night when I came back to sleep, I saw his name is Elder Joseph. I think he's still a pastor. He's now a pastor in one of the apostolic, the apostolic church branches wow. in Abuja. Okay. So when I came back, I now saw two angels. I can't call them angels. I saw two white men in white apparel. They shook me and they said, Are you blessed? I said, I was blessed. Oh, wow. And that was how. One thing led to the other. I got baptized. I became very committed. Me, I'm a very passionate person. Once I like something, I commit myself. And then this. this Transformation, transformation and began. 
Mm. I started disconnecting. What was difficult for me was to disconnect from my friends that were classmates and were football mates. Mm. They could palm their hair, put earrings. I mean, I don't like those things. Drink, we we'll go to party, but me, I don't drink because I don't like, I don't like it. When I drink and the taste, I don't like the taste of alcohol, and I, I didn't like smoking. Mm. All this, I didn't like the natural, not because. Uh, it was because I was. I was you just had your own natural high. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I got born again. So when I became very serious, now persecution now began. My brother, my elder sister. Now I became. There was a very drastic change. Change. People didn't recognize me again. Myself. When I was talking about prayer there and the Holy Spirit, some of these things I didn't share. That was what prayer helped me. Anger was swallowed. Love was installed. My up to now, my strength is love and giving. That's my strength in Christianity. Now, the persecution became so much. They said I should go back to the village. And the thing is that it's because of the environment that I'm being influenced. I'm not serious with school again. This time I wasn't. I wasn't interested in football again. Mm. They called me for Abuja on the 13 camp. I didn't go. I refused to go. I started becoming. And this created because it was difficult for me to lose my friends. Anytime I come to school, they just shout, "Born again." It was so. <laughs> It was so, and it looks shameful to some extent. Hmm. Uh, used to blow our hair, you know, and things like that. I had to stop that, started back in school, and things like that. And that was how persecution took me back to the village. Oh. And then the village, I started hearing Billy Akani, those kind of book reading. And then I, I blew it on another level. Wow.